Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about kernel payloads, which is what can we do once we exploit a kernel vulnerability. We'll look at two different types of payloads, one which assumes you have code execution and you want to migrate to New Zealand, and the other one which is just a data-only attack which consists in patching kernel structures in order to elevate a given privilege to the system privileges. Okay, let's get started. Typically, when we have kernel privileges, we can't really start a new process with high privileges directly from the kernel. But because we have the highest privileges possible in the kernel, basically with the highest privileges, we can do less privileged actions, obviously. And so the idea is to migrate and execute a userland payload with the anti-authority system privileges. And so typically you have two ways to execute code in high privileged user and processes. If you already have kernel mode code execution, you can typically call APIs or use certain tricks in order to then inject code into existing user and processes with high privileges. And the other method is to actually just do what we call data only attacks, which basically doesn't even require any code execution to the kernel. All you usually need is an arbitrary read-write primitive into the kernel memory, and then you can manipulate the kernel structures, such as the tokens, security identifiers, or privileges, in order to keep high privileges to your own process. The advantage of the former method is that it applies to both local and remote scenarios, whereas the latter method only applies to local exploitation. And so with the recent mitigations in Windows 10 and later, it's getting harder and harder to get code execution into the kernel. And so usually what you get first is an arbitrary read-write primitive anyway. And so instead of then trying to get code execution into the kernel, in the local privilege escalation case, what most attackers do is that they just manipulate tokens in order to elevate an existing process they control in username, since it's just fairly straightforward. And so now we're going to talk about data-only attacks and elevation of process payload more specifically. And we're going to detail three methods to actually achieve that goal, which consist of manipulating certain structures into the kernel versus others. The first method, once you have like a kernel read-write primitive, is that you want to find a pointer to a privileged token in kernel memory, like the system token, and patch your target process structures so that it actually uses that system token pointer instead of the original unprivileged token pointer. And usually, the way that it works is you know that some existing high privileged process like lsas.exe or the system process has a reference in its e-process structure to the token that you want and you just find that token pointer and you patch your own target e-process structure to use that privileged token. So the first step would be to find an e-process structure of any process, and then you can basically just walk the linked list of e-process structures until you find a privileged process, and then you just grab the pointer to the token. Then you continue walking the linked list of e-process structures until you find your target process, and finally you patch your target e-process to hold the privileged token pointer you previously stole. In this example, we will assume we have some unprivileged comment prompt, cmd.exe, and if you type something like, who am I, you can see the token associated with this process is just from a regular user. In our case, it's the IE user. And if we read our exploit from this comment prompt, the goal would be to elevate this particular comment prompt privileges to the anti-authority system user, so that when you type, who am I, you can see you have system privileges. And so basically, we are going to show how to patch things in the debugger in order to effectively elevate our, our cmd.exe to system. And so the first thing we do is we dump out the process information of our cmd.exe using WinBag to get the eProcess address. From the eProcess, we can get the token structure pointer, which is effectively an X 
fast ref structure, which is just a special type that is a reference counted object, which has an object field. And so in the token case, the object field points to the actual token object. And so we see that our cnd.az token pointer ends with 7069. And then you can do the same for the system process and find the token pointer, which is referenced by the object field of the X fast ref structure as well. And so we see that the system process token pointer as with the hex 044. This slide just shows how you would manually find the e-process pointers for your target cnd.az process and for the system process. Assuming you already have a pointer inside the linked list of e-process. And so basically it shows that the linked list is done using the list entries structure, which is very common on Windows. And this list entry is at offset hex 2e8 on that particular Windows version. And so using the DL command, we can actually see all the elements of the linked list and we can find both the e-process for cmd.exe and the e-process for the system process. So inside the e-process structure, we set the offset to the linked list is hex 2e8. And so another field you need is the token pointer. And so it is at offset hex 358. And so the idea here is that we are just dumping out the original token pointer using the dq command. And we do that from the cnd.az process. And we see it ends with hex 7069. And then we are editing this token pointer with the eq command in order to replace it with the one from the system process ending with hex 044. And then we can just confirm by rereading it with DQ that it now points to the modified value that we've just written using EQ. And then we can press go in the debugger after making these types of modification and then just use our comment prompt again. And if you type who am I again, you can see that there is now a reference that cmd.exe is running at the NT authority system user. And so to summarize, assuming you have an arbitrary read-write primitive, all you need to do is working the link list. And so in the previous example, the system process was like the seventh entry. So you're basically doing seven reads of a link list to reach the e-process for the system process. Then you can read out a pointer to the token of the system process. And finally, you can write this pointer into your e-process for the cmd.exe process. And so you, you basically have like 10 steps maximum. Almost all of them are reads. And at the end, you do one write. And so it's always the same for every exploit you would work on. And so once you get that kind of arbitrary read-write primitive, and once you've got your theory down of something like this in the debugger, it's really trivial to add in a real world exploit. It is worth noting that there are some other options than patching a token pointer directly because security tools and stuff could detect this kind of thing. I want to guess that Kaspersky must have books or like a regular sort of kernel monitor that is checking for this type of behavior and then dumping like process memory or something because they seem to catch a ton of zero days being exploited in the wild and a lot of the exploits just seem to steal tokens in order to elevate privileges. Presumably, they have some software that is running in the kernel that just takes a snapshot of all of the processes and the pointers to the tokens and if all of a sudden the token pointer changes versus it just having some new permissional changes that would make sense for it to have, the security tool will flag it. And if it's specifically pointed to a token that is associated with something like the system process, that would not be normal. I would guess that it would never normally happen that a user and process would legitimately have a pointer to the exact same token structure that is referenced by the system process. So it would just be like something that you would flag 
and then just immediately dump the process memory to get a copy of the exploit or whatever. So one way that some people would get around that is to just modify the actual security descriptors associated with the process to give the token the same privileges as typical administrators users. I mean, I would guess that certain security products could detect that too, but it is the eternal cat and mouse game. And so it may be stealthier to avoid patching a token pointer directly. So the way it works is that the token itself has a reference to the actual owner security identifier, like the SID. So when we are parsing the system e process, instead of cloning the actual system token pointer, we can actually parse the system token structure and find the security identifiers for the owner and the groups, which in this case are the security identifier for the local system user and the administrator's group. And so we can just change the SID for the owner and the group in our cmd.exe token to be this local system and administrator's one. And so this is what it looks like in the debugger. Using the bank token command and passing the token pointers, we list all the security descriptors stored in the cmd.exe token as well as the system process token. And so typically we would want to just replace some of the security descriptors from the cmd.exe process with some of the security descriptors from the system process, which again might bypass certain security software. But generally in our experience, we don't actually need to worry, worry about doing that. The last method to do data only attacks to elevate our process is to just modify the actual token itself to give it all of the privileges which would let our process access other processes memory. Adding new privileges is just a matter of adjusting a bitmap in the token to add the privileges. And so typically you would add the SC debug privilege capability so you can read other processes memory like Elsass so you can dump hashes or credentials, pivot to other systems and so on. This slide just shows that a typical cmd.exe is missing all the super powerful privileges like SC debug privilege. And so you could just patch this if you wanted into your cmd.exe privileges. But again, in our experience, we don't need to worry about doing that. And patching the actual token pointer is enough in general.